This, my friends, is the stealth shelf. It looks like a normal shelf from the outside, but when this skull is placed in just the right position, the bottom will come out, revealing whatever you have hidden on the inside. When I first saw the stealth shelf on the King of Random's YouTube channel, I knew I had to have one, and I knew my subscribers would get a kick out of it as well. So I messaged him, and I asked him if I could show how it works, how it's made, the construction, and how to mount it to a wall on my channel. Lucky for us, he had an extra kit for me to assemble, and he's about to have a whole lot more kits for everyone to assemble with his Kickstarter. So if you want a stealth shelf of your very own, finish watching this video to see how it's made and mounted to a wall, and then check out the link in the video description to get a stealth shelf of your very own. The Kickstarter ends this week though, so don't waste too much time. Let's get started. So here's my stealth shelf kit. The package of the Kickstarter kit might look a bit different, but all the construction will be the same as what I show you here in this video. First, make sure you have all the parts. The kit starts off with the base of the shelf. It has the two circles drilled into the top, and then the three crown molding pieces that make up the sides. Then the middle section with its two side pieces, and the large top rectangle with its three thin trim pieces. A package of screws, the hinges, the chains, and the magnetic lock, which I'll show you in a bit. Let's start with the core of the shelf. This is what's going to hold all of the shelf weight, so it's pretty important. I'm going to use the four large screws that go through the backboard into each of the little arms. Pay attention to how the arms are oriented. The diagonal cut on each arm is facing down, and there is a little bit of space on that backboard under each arm. I'm going to show this whole project only using hand tools, but if you have a drill, it'll speed things up considerably. Either way, this project doesn't take very long. All the hard work is already done for you. Now that my core is done, let's set that off to the side and start with my top shelf piece. This is the largest wood rectangle in your kit. Each of these thin little decorative trim pieces will go around the edge of the board to hide the compartment door below it, and to hide the layers of the top board itself. So I use a dab of wood glue and spread it thin all along where the trim is going to touch. Spreading the wood glue thin helps it get tacky faster, and it won't ooze out when you put the trim in place. If you are going to stain your finished shelf, oozing wood glue would not look good with stain on it, so be careful not to get glue on any visible exterior wood. I line up my trim with the top layer of wood just below the flat surface of the shelf, and then I use a super small finish nail to pin it in place, also included with the kit. If you notice, the decorative trim is not flat, so in order to sink the nail into the surface of the trim, you'll need a nail setter. If you don't have one of those, you can use a longer screw or nail to get that head into the surface of the wood. The side pieces of trim go on the exact same way, just make sure to line up each of the 45 degree pre-cut angles with each other to make nice corners. Set the top on a soft rag or towel to not damage the trim as you are working on the opposite end. The nice thing about this kit is that everything is already pre-cut. Alright, now that our core and our top piece is done, we're going to assemble the base. Lining up these huge angles can be tricky. I'm going to use the same wood gluing technique as before. Before I line up the trim pieces with the bottom board corners, I'm going to poke a small hole where my nail is going to sit. This will keep the nail from sliding out of place when I hammer it down. You receive quite a few of the little finish nails in this kit, so feel free to add a few here and spread them out along the rest of the project trim as you need them. Adding the side pieces to the bottom crown molding gets a little trickier. The most important part is that corner or seam where the two pieces of molding meet. I want them to line up perfectly. I add one small nail to the bottom corner of the board and then I tack the top corner of the trim with another nail after they are perfectly lined up. This holds them in place as I add a third little nail to the far bottom corner after pulling it down just a tiny bit so it's parallel with the bottom of the base. Let's watch this other side and it will make a little more sense. I add wood glue to all sides just like usual and then get that bottom corner next to the seam nailed first. Then I'll nail that top corner of the molding to get it to line up perfectly. Now this crown molding was just a tiny bit off with that angle cut, but since I've already lined up that corner seam perfectly and nailed it into place, it can flex a little bit before I nail it to the base of the shelf, and the seam will still be perfect because it was nailed first. Inside of your kit, there is a small angle of wood. This is part of the latch. I decided that the strongest place for this latch to be is in the center of the shelf. Add a little bit of wood glue to the bottom and then nailed the little sliver into the crown molding with the small finish nails. One on the top and one on the back side, making sure that the nails aren't gonna poke through the shelf into the front before I nail them in place. 
If you have any extra small finished nails, feel free to spread them around the rest of the trim so everything's held securely in place. And before I add any hardware, I'm gonna add the color. One nice thing about building your own shelf is that you get to pick the color. You can stain it or paint it however you want. I chose a dark stain. I apply a thin coat of stain with a rag, and then while it's still wet, I wipe off the excess liquid so it leaves an even coloring across all of the wood. It helped to drip a little bit of extra stain into the fine details of the crown molding, since the rag wouldn't reach it directly, and then I can wipe off the excess still. No matter what you decide to use, regular paint or stain, make sure that you start in a non-visible area, like the inside or the bottom so that any early mistakes will be hidden from view. Now that the stain or paint is dry, we can add the hardware. These are called mortised full overlay cup hinges. In this kit, all of the hard legwork is already done. The hole in the base is drilled out, and the screw locations on that center core piece that we already assembled are pre-marked as well. You should expand the hinge first though. Just loosen up that top screw and slide the middle part up. It is a small adjustment, but it'll give you a bit more room to play with. Tighten that top screw back down to finalize the adjustment. The bottom screw on this hinge is used to adjust how close the bottom drawer sits to the wall. I'll show you that in a second. Loosely screw the hinges into the pre-marked holes on the center core, but don't tighten them down all the way just yet. We need to get the screws lined up in the bottom part of the hinges first. Then when all the screws are all lined up, tighten each screw all the way. It's time to attach the top shelf. I propped up the center core with my pliers so that the core is level. Then I took the larger nails and hammered that top board into the center core, making sure to sink a few nails into the core arms as well for security. And it works. The shelf opens and closes without the bottom board touching the table. This is important because if it touches the table during the opening process, it will also touch and damage your wall when it's hung up. The nice thing about these hinges is that you can adjust the bottom screw. So if it touches the table or you just want a bit more space, Screw in that bottom screw a bit, and it will lift that bottom edge of your shelf away from the wall, giving it more room to move. Now for the magic. This is a little plastic lip that goes with the locking mechanism. This lip gets installed flush with that little piece of extra wood that we nailed in earlier. Make sure that the top of this latch, the little piece of wood, and the top of the molding are all flat with each other. Here is the magnetic lock. When any strong magnet gets close, it unlocks itself, even through the thick top board of this shelf. Lining this magnetic lock with that little plastic lip is pretty easy. I used the toothpaste trick from Grant's video. Apply toothpaste to the top of the little plastic bit, and when the shelf is shut, a dab of toothpaste gets left on the top board, letting us know generally where the lock needs to sit. I marked the screw holes of the lock and then set my two screws in place. It doesn't need to be super exact at this point because the lock can be slid up or down along the screws. So if it doesn't connect with the plastic the first time, adjust it again until the whole latch is making contact with its little plastic counterpart. Then when the magnet is placed on top, it will unlock, allowing you full access to your hidden goodies inside. Now this last bag contains the chains. I use my screwdriver to pilot a little hole into the arms of the core, and then stick the screw into the circular washer, and then through the chain, and then repeated the process on the other end of the chain, making sure that both chains have the same tension on either side. So mounting the shelf is gonna be a new puzzle all by itself. In most North American homes, we have something called drywall, which is the outside of the wall. If you screw a shelf into drywall, the shelf can't hold much weight. This is what happened when my roommate put these floating shelves in and this one ripped out of the wall. So with my floating shelf, since it's gonna have stuff inside of it, we wanna find something called a stud. The studs happen every 16 inches inside of this drywall. You can take a stud finder and place it on the wall to tell you where the studs are at, or you can just knock on the wall Wait till you hit something solid and you found a stud. So if you're gonna be hanging your shelf on concrete or brick, you're gonna need something like this. This is called a lead anchor. You drill a hole in the concrete or the brick, set the lead anchor, and then your screws will go through the shelf into the anchor. Supposedly, these anchors hold about 50 pounds. So as long as you have one anchor on either side of the shelf, you should be good to go. So these holes are drilled exactly 16 inches apart, and so they should be able to hit two studs right there on that wall. The holes drilled into the back of the shelf make it easier to find the studs. I set one screw into place and then use the level to make sure that the shelf isn't sitting crooked before putting in the rest of the screws. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Double check all of your measurements and stud locations before hanging the shelf. All right, so we have the shelf installed. I've taken a skull and put in some magnets on the bottom of them. They're the rare earth magnets. You can get on Amazon for pretty cheap. And so when I line this skull up with the little lock, It'll latch and unlatch. So we can close it up. 
It's locked. Looks like a normal shelf. And then when I take the skull, unlock it, it'll drop back down. Now Grant, the king of random, is using his shelf to hide weapons, passports, or even money. But my own research has concluded that this shelf is perfect for hiding 60 Oreos, or 200 strands of licorice, or even 3,481 Skittles. If you want one of these kits for yourself, I will link the Kickstarter in the video description of this video. If you enjoyed watching this project and want to see a bunch of other creative projects by the King of Random, head on over to his YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you around. So there's the shelf. Just barely finished the Skittle scene. Luckily, we didn't get too many on the carpet. My little makeshift funnel worked out pretty well.